Okay, so I can't really play my trombone at this time in my apartment. I really don't want to disturb the neighbors, so gotta go with the next best thing. Trombone mouthpiece. That being said, let's preview the Washington Huskies. was a monumental year for the Washington Huskies. They went 6-6 six and six, and that gave them bowl eligibility for the first time in many years and they were able to win a bowl game and uh, that pretty much put us over a hump Husky fans have wanted to be over for quite some time. Um, I believe the last time the Huskies went bowling was the 2002-2003 season. Um, I could be wrong, it could be the year before. Uh, and actually, now that I think about it, I think it was the year before. And we, they went to the Sun Bowl and lost to Purdue. So now we finally have the Bowl victory. We finally have, uh, you know, we finally, you know, we sent Jake Locker out on a good note. We sent our seniors out on a good note. And now it's time, uh, so where do we go from here? Well, from my perspective, as I've said before with my Seahawks video, I want to see progression. So the Huskies were 0-12 in 2008. They were 5-7 in 2009. And last year, they were 6-6. Now, I'm not going to say if they don't go 7-5 this year, it's a failed season. No, no, no. I would like this team to win 7 regular season games. That is the number that I would like to shoot for. Um, if they don't go 7-5 and five in the regular season and still clinch a bowl, a bowl game, fine, that's awesome, but I will be disappointed because the Huskies have been going upward and they still would like to see that big 7th seven victory, seventh victory. And I think the Huskies can do it this year in terms of getting that 7th victory. Uh, they got a lot of games last year where they could have gone either way, and with the way the conference is this year, I think there's a good possibility that could happen again. The Huskies will be doing something brand new, like the rest of the 12 schools in the Pac-12. Um, they, we, they will be a part of, uh, of one. Uh, they will be in one of two divisions. And they'll be in the North Division, which um, I really do like. Um, the only downside, the only bad thing I think about that, that's going to come with the Pac-12 is the North Division is probably going to be one of the most overlooked divisions in all of college football. Um, just historically, people do not look at the Northwest schools um, as powerhouses. Just, that's just how it is um, with East Coast bias. So that being said, uh, we now have division rivals as well as conference ri rivals, but got to win games in the division to compared to uh, all the games in the conference compared to previous years. Um, our division will consist of the Oregon Ducks, Oregon State Beavers, Washington State Cougars, obviously. Um, California Golden Bears and the Stanford Cardinal. Um, I do like how the divisions were divided. Um, the only downside is I think that uh, as years progress, um, Stanford and or Cal will be favored to win the North Division every year because they have the California connection. Um, but that's just me. Uh, you know, that's just something that we got to deal with being in the Northwest. Um, I do think the Huskies have a chance to go seven and five, as I said before. Um, I, however, a lot of their games are toss-up games. Uh, we're going to be playing Utah and Colorado for the first time. Um, I just heard on KJR AM that um, the first ever Pac-12 game for uh, the University of Utah is going to be against Washington, and that's going to be in Salt Lake City, so that's going to be a tough game. 
Um, Colorado is coming here, so that's a good thing. You don't have to go uh, go on the road for that game. Uh, the big game this year, outside of the Apple Cup, is the last game at Husky Stadium. The stadium is going to go through a remodel, and it's going to be between. It's going to uh, the game is going to be between the Huskies and the Oregon Ducks. The Apple Cup this year will take place at what used to be called Quest Field, now called CenturyLink Field. Uh, the non-conference season for the Dogs does scare me uh, a little bit. Obviously, the game against Nebraska is going to be tough. Um, rightly so. We punched Nebraska in the mouth last year on TV and during that big bowl game, so I'm sure they're licking their chops and they're waiting for us as we travel down, um, as we go to Nebraska. Hawaii, not so much, not really concerned about them. Um, this is actually um, the University of Hawaii uh, paying up their end of the bargain. We played Hawaii back in 2007. Now they're coming here. So uh, that's, um, that's pretty cool. Um, but the one that actually a lot of people are kind of taking for granted right now, at least that's the vibe, is the game against Eastern Washington University. And I understand that a lot of, like, you, you hear that, and, and probably the average Husky fan is thinking, well, why, come on, why would you be concerned about the Eastern Washington Eagles? I mean, they're, they're, they're Division I, but they're FCS. They're, they're, they're just below the dogs. They don't have as many scholarships. You know, you look at size and, and athletic ability. The Huskies have the, the, the advantage. I get that. I, 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 totally, I totally understand that. However, if the Huskies want any, any success this year, they must beat Eastern Washington. Because, as a Central Washington, Univers Central Washington University graduate, I have seen several times when a small school who is right below you beats you and what happens afterward. Central, for a couple, uh, for this last decade, they didn't, um, for when I was there, they're not doing it this year, um, they used to, they did periodically schedule a Big Sky School. Big Sky, for those of you who don't know, is uh, Eastern, Washington's uh, Eastern Washington's conference, the Big Sky Conference. And in some cases, Central would pull the upset. In, uh, not last year when e Eastern beat Central, but in two, I believe it was 2007 or 2006, we took down the Eagles. And what happened to us? We, win, we won the conference. In one of those years, we go to the playoffs. What happens to Eastern? Not, nothing really special. They did have one playoff year, uh, random playoff year, but outside of, I, I'm pretty sure the year that we beat them, uh, wasn't pre it wasn't pretty for them. We also have taken, uh, Central has also taken down Montana State University in Bozeman. Um, we saw what happened with them. They went down. They, uh, two years ago, Central takes down Idaho State. What happens to Central? Well, that helps with their conference. They ended up winning the cup. They ended up, uh, excuse me, that helped with their national ranking. At the end of the regular season, they're hosting playoff games. They're undefeated. While Idaho State is lucky enough to get any victories. Um, now you might say, well, wait a minute, that's just Central. Like, why are you talking about Central when they're Division Two? All right, I'll go even further. Does anybody remember what happened to Michigan after Appalachian State won? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, when a small school can pull the upset. It sends a, a, tr a trickle, it tr it's just a trickle-down effect. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a mentality thing with Division I players. And, and, and who knows? Maybe I'm making too big a deal out of it. But when I heard we are the Huskies are playing Eastern Washington University, my first reaction was, uh-oh, because of this reason. Eastern Washington is coming off a national championship run. They are the defending uh, Division I AA or SCS ch national champion, whatever you want to call them. Bottom line is they went all the way this year. And there is a good, and this game is so much for the Eagles because it's going to send a lot of it's going to pretty much determine recruiting. It, it will. Do you go with the team that's winning now, Eastern Washington University, who's going to the playoffs and winning national championships, or do you go with the University of Washington, a program that's now starting to get on the rise? So that is a must-win game for the Dogs. If the Dogs lose to Eastern Washington University, it will be a very long year. Now, I could be making too big a deal out of that game, you know, and that, that can happen. But I have seen small schools take down big schools, and I've seen what happens. And I don't want the Huskies to go through that. Believe me, it was, we went through something like that in 2008 when we didn't even win a game. So I don't want to see the Huskies go, 
you know, from here, lose to the Eagles, and then kind of play this shaky, you know, shaky football throughout the rest of the season. Um, as far as going to a bowl game, um, I really don't mind what bowl game we go to. I still think the Huskies are kind of out of the Rose Bowl, Rose bowl talk, but as long as they make it to a bowl game, um, it would be nice to go back to the Holiday Bowl um, with that being a top bowl game. Um, that's fine, but for the most part, we're just kind of take it, uh, take it um, from there. Uh, big concern with the dogs as of this point. Their running back, Chris Polk, is injured. He's nursing an injury. Um, I just heard Steve Sarkeesian on KJR AM that uh, he might miss the Eastern Washington game, and that would be a huge blow to the dogs, not just for that game, but for the rest of the season. Although he did, although Coach Sarkeesian kind of spun it in a positive way, saying that uh, Chris Polk, with him not playing now, it means he's going to be fresh and refreshed and ready to go when he does play, and therefore he's not going to be beat up as much as he would be at the end of the year. So. I guess I guess that could be the the positive. Um, another story for the team is going to be the new quarterback on um, how uh, Mr. Price is going to take over. Um, Keith Price is going to take over the shoes of Jake Locker. Um, and or, there's already a story um, evolving right now. Uh, Price has been named the starting quarterback, and the backup right now is Nick Montana, Joe Montana's son. And there's already talks about how Joe Montana's son Nick might leave after this year if he does not see playing time. So we've got to watch out for that as well. Um, big key for the dogs, not the offensive line, not their wide receivers, but once we have a running game, the big key is going to be their secondary. The Huskies live and die with their secondary. We saw it last year. When that secondary gets lit up, got lit up, all, all heck broke, broke loose. But if they can keep it together, then they have a legitimate shot of winning. So it's going to be the secondary. That's been the story for, the story for years, you know, Okay offense, okay special teams, terrible secondary. Now we're starting to see an okay secondary take the field. So should be a fun year. Hopefully we can get that seventh victory and be seven and five. Again, if we do not go seven and five, I will not say it's a failed season because we're we're bowl eligible, but I will be disappointed in the team. All right, uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time here on Football Week on the Pugs Thoughts in the Doghouse.